morning, Tom. How are you? Hello, Matthew. How are you? I'm not too bad, not too bad. Nice and early at Ascot Racecourse. Yes. I brought you over here because in a couple of weeks' time, we've got another auction here. Ooh. I think 200 plus cars. 200. Some lovely little things, little motorbikes, pit bikes. Wow. Great Ferraris, Lamborghinis, the lot. Everything you could possibly cater for. I'm excited. Very good then. What have we got in store today then? Well, today I thought I'd bring you down, get a couple of special cars down here, yep. take them for a test, see which one takes your fancy. Okay. And then I've got something at the end that I think I might just be able to turn your, turn your mind towards the classics a little bit rather than these modern supercars of yours. Mm, okay, we shall see. Let's go and take a look then, shall we? It's worth a try. So Tom, I told you I had something special and I don't think I've disappointed. Ferrari 458 Speciale. It's gotta be a bit of you. Wow. If I could have asked in advance to bring one car, it would have been this. I absolutely love Specialis. I'm after one myself, actually. Well, this one's 295 to 350. I think they're great news. I, I mean, there's been are. talk of them being half a million cars in the future. Don't hold me to that. But they are certainly good news. Now, you must know a bit about these, probably even more than I do. So give us some facts. Would you like some nerdy stats? Come on, let's do it. So 597 brake horsepower, Ooh. 9,000 RPM uh, headline revving. Oof. We've got a four and a half litre naturally aspirated V8 engine and it's 90 kilograms lighter than the 458 Italia, which it kind of uh, usurped, if yep. you like, with things like uh, thinner glass. Thinner glass. Very exciting stuff. I can bore on all day about this car, and I will do later in the video, but you've got something to show me. Yes, so you're gonna be driving this one, yep. and I'm gonna be driving this, which is a backdate, complete resto mod 911. Homage to sort of the early 70s ST, which were the FIA homologated cars. This has got double bubble roof, external fuel caps, ground up restored, it's stunning. Three litre engine, wow. and I'm gonna have a lot of fun taking you around in this, whilst you can grab the keys, and we can go for a drive in the uh, Speciale. You've absolutely smashed it. Great choices. Good work, sir. Cheers. So I've let Matthew disappear then. At the risk of boring him, I'm going to go through some stats whilst he's disappeared. So the heart of this car is that naturally aspirated four and a half litre V8 engine pumping up to 9,000 RPM. It punts out a staggering 133 brake horsepower per litre thanks to its 14 to 1 compression ratio. That is absolutely bonkers. Those that are a little bit nerdier about engines will fully recognise that. We'll come round the side of the car then because it's not just the engine that Ferrari have played with on this car. This car when new was only £30,000 more than the standard 458 but what you actually got for that £30,000 was actually a huge huge package. So we've got lightweight forged wheels, we've got lighter carbon ceramics. The whole car, as I said, is 90 kilos lighter than the standard 458 Italia that it kind of didn't actually replace, but kind of usurped at the top of the tree. We've got lighter windows. We've got Lexican glass at the back, actually akin to that of the F40, which is a lightweight plasticky type uh, material. I'm sure Ferrari probably didn't explain it like that. And at the front, we've got some really clever aero tech. Believe it or not, You've got flaps at the front here. You've got vertical flaps and a horizontal flap as well. These vertical flaps, they open at 105 miles an hour with air pressure. And at 135 miles an hour, the horizontal flap actually opens as well, which gives it more downforce through under the car, 20% more downforce actually, in fact. So all that's going on on the front as you're barreling along. And unless you read the spec sheet, you wouldn't know it was happening, but really, really clever stuff at the front of this car. We've got a blue Nart stripe painted on here, and this was an option from Ferrari, from you, that cost thousands. All in all, it's an unbelievable piece of kit. These are getting rarer, they're getting more sought after, and I truly believe these will hit four to 500,000 pounds relatively easy, with some examples of these actually over 400,000 pounds already on the open market. So I think the estimate on this is a little bit reserved, actually. So. Good luck to the bidders. I might have a bid, and I think the only thing for it right now is to go for a spin. Right, Tom, let's uh, see what this thing can do. <laughs> Coming up to a tunnel up here. Shall I behave myself? Oh, no. Don't Shall I be yourself. mature? Let's listen. Oh, ready? Windows down. Sound. 
let's get the windows up. Right, first impressions then. It's actually quite comfortable to sit in here. It's obviously raucous sounding, but actually really nice. Seats are beautifully holding, and it is a nice place to sit. But that, oh, that noise. It is, it is comfortable. So what we've got here, we've actually got a bumpy road setting, which those familiar with Ferraris will, will recognize. There's a little kind of suspension button on the steering wheel. You press it and the whole, the dampers kind of slack off a bit and it's just more palatable for UK roads. It's almost the opposite to your normal road going car where you'd press that button to firm the suspension. Yeah. In a Ferrari, you press the button to soften the suspension. And, and of course we've got nose lift. So we've, we've got nose lift as well, bumpy road setting. It's actually way more palatable in here than I thought it would be. Yeah. Obviously it's 90 kilos of weight have been stripped out of it with thinner windows, less sand and less fancy things like carpets. We've got carbon fiber, like underbody as well. So all those things usually would ring alarm bells and you're thinking, this is gonna sound like a can full of beans, but actually, no. it's pretty palatable. Yeah. It's pretty nice actually, to you use. Know, it's, a, it's everything Alcantara based and, and it doesn't feel too raw. But no. blimey, you can get the sense for just how much power is under that right foot. We are on public roads, of course, and we are in somebody else's car. So those wanting to see it going sideways <laughs> at 140 miles an hour, if you see that, something's gone badly wrong because it's not deliberate. Yes, and I don't think we'll see you again working with the stocks if that happened. I think my P45 <laughs> will be uh, pushed through the printer very quickly at that point. Um, but yeah, just plodding along, we're in seventh gear with this seven speed dual clutch gearbox. It's quite friendly. It feels a little bit more hardcore, but nowhere near as much as I thought it would be. I thought this would be an unpleasant experience to kind of potter around in, but Ferrari have actually done a really good job. And I know people that have these and they've said, you know, it's actually not horrendous. No. It, it's, they've towed the line really, really well. So um, I'm pleasantly very, very, very surprised. Uh, and the want for one of these is growing <laughs> stronger, even just kind of pootling around. The brakes are great. Obviously, you've got the lighter weight carbon ceramics, which are specific to the Speciale. Um, it's good. I, okay. I wanted to hate it. And what I actually want to do is tell people at home that it's rubbish <laughs> and not to bid on it, because I want to bid on this one. But it's not. <laughs> but it's not. Am I allowed to bid on stuff? I am, aren't I? You are allowed to bid on stuff, yes. I okay. guess, of course. Well, people at home, no bidding, please. Specialis are terrible. They're actually not. Do you know what? I'm bound to tell the truth on this on this channel and, and be a, a consummate professional. The Speciale is going to be good news, I think, long term. I think this is very definitely the peak of technological advancement before regulations and efficiencies and boringness got brought into cars and over-egged electronic aids. Yes. yes, it's got SSC, which is the, the slide control, side slide control, um, allowing you to slide it around, but it's, it's before and purists would agree with this, before things just got too clinical and too medicinal. So you get the best of both worlds. You get that ability to still feel in control of your car and it can bite you, but actually, yeah. ultimately, Ferrari are clever enough to make sure that you're not in the hedge. Absolutely, and you've still got that NAV8 engine, which of course, the 458 Speciale was replaced by the 488 GTB, and then the 488 Spider, and then the 488 Pista. 488 Pista I've also owned. Check me out. Yeah, there you go, a bit more like it. Little, uh, <laughs> little flex on this channel. Um, so what were these new? This was circa 2000, two, ah, 208,000. That was back in 2014, wasn't it? Feb 2014 was apparently the launch date for this car. Uh, this is a 2015 car, so it's a year into the run, which is never a bad thing. Um, yeah, so 208,000, I think, I think the 12C was actually more expensive. McLaren 12C was actually more expensive yeah, than this so. when it came yeah. out which ironically now, the 12C, what are they, 80 grand? Yeah, it dropped in price. These have held price and gone up. So these are sort of circa 3,350 now and talks and murmurs of, you know, next 500,000 pound car. So I think so. It's been an incredible, incredible purchase for the owner now. I mean, so we're talking 3,800 miles on the clock. So we're, we're lucky to be driving it really because obviously the mileage has been kept nice and low. It's crazy few miles. But you obviously the next that. buyer, and we're talking money purely here, could be in for even further rises in value, all while being able to drive this fantastic car. He's a collector's item. It is, and if you look at the F12 equivalent of the Speciale, the TDF, uh, they're now nudging back up to 
eight, nine hundred k, and I think they'll nudge a million quid yeah. quite happily at some point. Um, so these are still undervalued, and that's one of the main reasons I want to get into one of these. So what we're talking about speed. So we're, we're north of sixty, I think two point nine, just under three seconds. Yeah, north sixty, just under three seconds. If you've got a dry road and some warm tyres, absolutely. And top speed two hundred and two miles an hour. Neither yeah. of these things we will be testing today. No, no, and that's with the aid of some clever electronics to keep the downforce. And you were telling me about the gearbox, the the downshifts. Yeah. So the, in the Speciale, the downshifts are forty four percent faster apparently over and above the Italia generation. That's impressive. Which again, I haven't told you. So that shows you just how much development went into the Speciale. It's yep. not just a sticker put across the top and a badge on the back. It's not, no. And obviously all the aero has been redone as well. And that's, I think, Ferrari's in-house aero guys. The 458 Italia and Spider, they were Pininfarina, Coachworks. Uh, yep. uh, and like the TDF, Ferrari took uh, all the aero know-how from F1 and whatnot and put it into this car in-house. And finally, are you going to be bidding? I will have a bid. <laughs> You're very tempted, aren't you? We'll see you? where very we are financially tempted, in three yeah. weeks. If all things could change at that point. It is the 21st, Lord above, the 21st is my birthday weekend. Oh, really? And I'm going to be in Barcelona <laughs> for the F1 couple working. A couple of drinkies and we'll be off and running on a bit of online Don't bidding. encourage me. www.historics.co.uk. Tom, you easily bid abroad. That's no problem at all. Right, from driving that fabulous 458, this has got to be my favourite of the auction. Now, it's a backdated 911. I think it's a 1983 car. And it was a homage to the ST, as I said to Tom earlier. So these are steel wings. It's all been completely renovated and fully reworked by a company called Riviera Auto Bodies. As you can see, there are other lovely little featured details like the central aluminium fuel cap and side oil filter caps here. The engine is the original three litre, but it's been thoroughly reworked and upgraded. It's got 964 cams amongst other lovely yummy details and inside is completely bespoke, including this clock arrangement, which I absolutely adore. It's a stunning, stunning car. It's very much up my street, bit of resto mod. The mulberry colour is beautiful with these great Porsche decals. But that all said, I think at the value of 95 to 120, it's an epic, epic value. I think these are worth way more and it would have cost the chap a lot more to build it. This is a custom built exhaust and it sounds raucous. Absolutely fabulous. In fact, Tom, let's get in this car and see how this sounds. Thank you, thank you. That sounds good. Right, here we are. So we're now in the 911. So a bit of a different feel. Yep. Definitely feels like a classic, but it's taut. It's just as raucous, but a completely different flat six sound, that custom built exhaust. Now this car was, it was literally custom built by Riviera Auto Bodies for the client. As I said before, a bit of a homage to the ST, the old FIA regulated car. Let's go into this tunnel. Oh, completely different noise. I love it. <laughs> I'm very happy. But it's, it's a lovely place to sit actually. Seating position's good. These dials, which are all custom, look fantastic. Now, the engine is the original three litre, completely reconditioned. The original engine would have probably been about 180 brake. This will be running significantly more. Now, I wish we could try it, but as you said with the Speciale, it's not my car. And public roads. And public roads, well, that's secondary public roads. And road presumably road. you quite like having a job. <laughs> or maybe you don't sometimes. Well, you know, it depends on the day of the week. But it's definitely got a bit more poke. That custom exhaust makes you sound like you're going faster even when you're not. But it's definitely nice and tight as we move around here. It feels a bit a bit like something I'd never have got when these were new. Of course, no 1980s Porsche. I was one years old. It would have been no use to me. And by the time I get to them, they all feel a bit loose. But this having had so much work. Absolutely. It's pretty much what you would have had back then. I can vouch for Ropiel Porsches. You love them. I've done you? a couple of uh, <laughs> restorations. I say I've done, but I've been involved in. Um, and I think this car is what I should have just bought. Ah, see, there's a magic rule about classic cars. Let someone else restore it and you buy that. Restoring it is a different love. 
and this chap presumably absolutely loved restoring this car. There's a lot of personal touches in here. It's definitely bespoke with a double bubble roof, the alley uh, fuel caps and the colour. And he obviously loved restoring it. It's only done 958 miles from new. It's barely running really. So he probably enjoyed the restoration more than he did the finished product. You see that a lot, do you not? I think it's a combination of two things. A, you've got that different mentality. People that like restoring cars, they enjoy the process, they enjoy the build, and then when they get to the other end of it, they think, right, yeah. get rid of that, go again, Next I enjoyed one. that. Yeah. Uh, and you've also got, and I've pr I'm probably gonna fall into the latter camp here, the people that spend ages and ages restoring a car, end up not really enjoying the expensive process, running out of money, and then coming out of it the other end. And I, I don't think that's what this car falls into. No. But I think my restored cars, I'm kind of nudging away at that category well, now. You do get this. A lot of people take on restorations unknowing, unwittingly. It's an expensive hobby, let's say. Um, yes. And it, it's got to be a labour of love. And a lot can be said for someone buying something like this straight up. Because you're capitalising. He's probably done, well, he's done nearly 900 miles. He probably really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then he's on to the next project. But this car is still like brand new. You know, 900 miles is nothing. I mean, a, rest a restoration of this kind of calibre is easy six figures just for the work alone. Easy. I mean, without the car to start with. The engineering that is involved in putting steel wide wings on it, the double bubble roofs, these aren't standard parts off the no. shelf. These are, you know, specialists in a, in a garage classically restoring a car ground up. That combined with the engine work, the 964 cams, the reworked and reconditioned gearbox. I mean, this this actually this gear lever is fantastic down here. It's like a dog leg box, you can see all the workings yeah, through it's it. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's got the original Becker radio in here, which is a nice touch back to the classics. And, and the all the leather and the trimmings, again, it's all bespoke. It's beautifully done. Um, and I'm a big fan of resto mods, as I've said a hundred times. I just like that they do tick both boxes. Yeah. In the same way the Speciale ticks that modern and visceral experience, yep. these tick that modern and classic experience. Yeah, It disc breaks, it stops well, you know. A lot of these rest mods you get things like air conditioning and so on and so forth. You can go a long way, but ultimately you can drive them. You can rely that you turn the key in the morning and you can Absolutely. go for a nice drive and not worried everything's going to fall apart. It takes the guesswork out of driving them, be it from the gearbox, be it with the steering, be it with the yeah. brakes, be it with that, is it going to start? just takes the guesswork out of all of it, which is actually the things that, whilst a lot of people say is entertaining, realistically, it's actually kind of annoying. <laughs> Especially I, in the modern world, we're all a bit busy. Yeah. Well, this one's 95 to 130, I think, is our estimate on it, which I think, bear in mind, it's probably cost 150,000 pounds, including the car to build at least. Yeah. Uh, it's also now, because it's done 900 miles, it's 900 miles have been, all the fettling's done. Yep. Because often, and you'll notice this when you pick up your restored cars, there's a certain amount of fettling involved because you're clipping old parts to new parts, reworking, yeah. new engineering, and without the R&D of a modern car. So yeah, there's, there's a running a, in period. There's a running in period. This has been done. This is beautiful. <laughs> Completely different noise than Speciale, but equally getting those hairs to stand up on end. It's Both a iconic car. noises. You've got Porsche Butt 6 and Ferrari V8. There's probably two of the best sounding cars, naturally aspirated sounding cars in the world. Can't argue with it. It's great. And uh, yeah, I've definitely learned a lesson here. Buy restored. <laughs> Now that was a lot of fun. Dominic, what are you doing here? I thought I'd show you boys a proper car. So designed in 1961, Jaguar E-Type, uh, the design of Malcolm Sayer, world famous aerodynamics engineer, or aeronautical aerodynamics engineer. This car's a 1963 version, still a series one, benefiting from toggle switches, aluminium dashboard, and benefiting from these attractive and very well upholstered seats. Um, this whole car is a beauty. This car is a covered headlight version and sits on these really striking wire wheels. Um, I think, as you can probably agree, really set the car off. So all in all, I think that this is a real winner for the show. Part, as I said, of one of the six in this auction, but also one of the 280 E-types that have been sold through Historics over the last 10 years. So it gives you some idea of how popular that they are.
uh, and I'm sure that they will be. And thank you, Dom. So that's about it from us and from these three lovely cars. Now, of course, the auction is coming up very shortly on the 21st of May, 9.30 start in the morning. But make sure, if you can, come and visit on the viewing days, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. You can see one of all these 200 cars from anything from no reserve right up to £350,000. And of course, it'd be great to see you. And once again, thank you very much, Tom. Thank it's you very great. much. Good choices, a good yes. day had. If you've enjoyed the content today on the Historic Auctions YouTube channel, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you tap the bell icon and make sure also you stay tuned for the podcast, which is not only on the Historic Auctions YouTube channel, but it's also on your favorite streaming platforms as well. And finally, before we go, make sure you're following on Instagram because these three cars and all the other cars, well, most of them actually, appear on the Instagram page before they hit the official catalog. So you get a heads up on the car well in advance if you follow Instagram. For now, thank you again, sir. I've well had a great done. day. Yes. Epic choices. I look forward to auction day. And for now, hope you enjoy this and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.